CNN announced that regardless of Joe Biden's decision to run for president or not, they will still leave an open podium for him at the Democratic presidential... F- I have no idea what it's called. How's it going? Welcome to the James Comet Experience. I, of course, am your host, James Comet. Another episode bringing you the week of news. Let's get into it. Kim Kardashian had some pretty interesting words regarding her pregnancy on her blog, which I'm sure is quite the read. Kim said, For me, pregnancy is the worst experience of my life. LOL. I don't enjoy one moment of it, and I don't understand people who enjoy it. For the person who said that to be the same person who endured a failed 70-day marriage, their father to be the person who freed O.J. Simpson, their stepfather to turn themselves into a woman, their sister to date a crackhead, their other sister to be seduced by a rapper above the legal age, a sex tape to come out about them to the public eye, embarrassing their entire family, their stepfather turned stepmother to allegedly kill someone via a car accident, and to be married to Kanye West? That kid must be causing some serious cramps in there. Pepsi is announcing a new Back to the Future edition of their bottle. The new bottle will commemorate Back to the Future Day on October 21st, 2015. There will only be 6,500 bottles made in the world and are being sold for $20 a pop. Only one drawback. The liquid inside is still Pepsi and not Coca-Cola. Love is pretty hard to find nowadays, let's be honest. Luckily, there are apps like Tinder to facilitate the process. Unless, of course, you're that guy who hiked up the prices of a pill designed to save lives. A woman realized her latest Tinder match was none other than Martin Shkreli, and she decided to put the entire conversation on the internet for people to blast. I don't know what this girl's so upset about. It's hard enough on Tinder to find someone who doesn't have an STD, and she found somebody who can cure the worst STD. In quite the upset, three inmates from a maximum security prison in New York defeated three Harvard undergrads in a debate competition. The hour-long competition was held Friday in front of an audience of about 75 fellow inmates from the Eastern New York Correctional Facility. This is what I expect happens when one of the team's training regimen is reading textbooks and watching Go Well Hunting, and the other team's training regimen is squirreling in drugs and steroids and negotiating their own bunk and fighting off prison rape. They may have lost the battle, but I'm gonna go ahead and say the Harvard grads won the war. The last thing you wanna do is argue for an hour with three men, two of which were convicted for manslaughter. This weekend, Amber Rose broke down in tears as she gave a speech at a slut walk event in Los Angeles. Little tip for the ladies, it's an honor to be invited back to be the keynote speaker at your college. It's not so much an honor when you get invited to be the keynote speaker of an event called Slut Walk. CNN announced that regardless of Joe Biden's decision to run for president, they'll leave an open podium for him at the October 13th Democratic debate. Officials said Biden's podium will be empty and he can show up the day of the event unannounced and can still get on stage. When asked if having a podium without opinions, facts, original thoughts, an inability to speak, not very pleasant to look at on stage at all times, would affect viewership and ratings, CNN execs reminded everyone that Rand Paul was at the Republican debates, and those ratings were fine. After 10 years of excavations by Trinity Southwest University in New Mexico, they believe they have found an ancient city in southern Jordan. Experts believe the city remains found could be the biblical city of Sodom. There's no word yet on if the teams used the rear entrance into the city. South Dakota is trying to give anyone a reason to go there with a new proposed marijuana resort. The resort will include nightclubs, bars, a smoking lounge, arcades, and outdoor music to create the perfect party atmosphere. All that sounds great, but why go all the way to South Dakota when you can just enroll at the University of Colorado Boulder? Convicted Norwegian mass murderer Anders Bering Brevik has threatened to go on a hunger strike due to his living conditions. Brevik was sentenced to 21 years in prison in 2011 for killing eight people with a van bomb and another 69 people at a youth camp by shooting them to death. Brevik said he plans on going on this hunger strike even if it means dying a slow, painful death by himself on the floor of his Norwegian prison as his body quits from the inside and his organs fail as no nutrients enter his body from starvation. I think I can speak for all of us when I say, hey man, it sounds like a plan. The last lunch menu in the world from the famous Titanic ship went on auction this weekend and sold for $88,000. The menu lists corned beef, dumplings, and other savory items from lunch on that fateful day in 1912. On the back of the menu, there's a single note scribbled in pen, a complaint. The food was a little cold. 
Monica Lewinsky is somehow in the news. She wrote a few posts of Vanity Fair and has been giving speeches for her anti-bullying organization, Bystander Revolution. Lewinsky admitted that she still suffers from shame, but is not afraid of who she is. She confessed that even to this day, she uses a different name to do things like ordering pizza or to go on job interviews. Suffering from shame? Using another name for a job interview and just to order pizza? Jeez. Sounds like Monica's really swallowing her pride nowadays. I never liked it.